Okay, let's um, do a short video on uh, an, op an example of the optimization project that you're working on this week. Um, so what we're given is that we have a certain volume of 500 cubic centimeters that we're trying to design some packaging for that minimizes surface area uh, since cost of packaging is often proportional to the amount of the surface area involved in creating the packaging. Um, so we're given that fact and that's pretty much it. Uh, so you're free to choose the style of packaging you want and I'm going to, um, in this example, talk a little bit about, um, I guess, a, a rectangular solid, uh, something that has, uh, I guess, a, a sketch it up here really quick. Um, so suppose the uh, one of the packages in question is something that uh, for purposes of advertising, we're going to give uh, one side twice uh, um, the dimension of the other side so that we have one large, I guess, face on the rectangular solid, one narrow face on the solid, and then some height Y. And uh, we would think of that as, as sort of the, uh, I guess, the package design as a decision that the designer would make for uh, whatever reason. So, if we choose to build a package in this way, then there's going to be some package that has, you know, width twice as uh, long as as a length uh, of the base that has a certain minimal surface area. Um, and so our goal is to find out what X and Y are such that they minimize the surface area required to make the package that contains the 500 cubic centimeters of volume. So let's dive in. Uh, if we think of uh, uh, the volume as uh, length times width times height, then we can see pretty quickly that it's going to be 2x squared y. And, um, well, that's got to be equal to 500 uh, if we're working in centimeters. Uh, so that's the cubic centimeter constraint for volume. Uh, now we have to come up with some sort of surface area um, um, argument, and that's the thing that we're going to want to optimize, and in this case minimize, right? So. We can see that the package has six faces, um, three of which are visible here in the drawing. So let's just calculate what the three are and double each. So if we think of the top, um, well, that's a 2x times an x. So this top one is 2x squared in surface area. If we think of this front one, well, it's 2x times a height of y. So this is 2xy. And this side one then is x times y or just xy. So the surface area is going to be all three of these summed, but, but times two, right? Because we have two, um, uh, I guess, six uh, sides to the rectangular prism, uh, of which we're only seeing three. So I'm going to use this as my expression, two times uh, 2xy plus an xy plus 2x squared. And uh, when I distribute the two, of course, I get 4xy plus 2xy plus 4x squared, and I add the 2xy common terms, we get 6xy plus uh, 4x squared as our surface area, um, um, I guess, expression. So this is the one that we want to minimize, um, but since we've got two variables, x's and y's, we're going to want to substitute out one of those so we can take a, a, a derivative with respect to just one of the two variables. And of course, the, the key there is the velocity, uh, or excuse me, the uh, volume equation up there. So the volume equation is easily solved for y, so um, that's what I'll do. I'll solve this for y. And when I do, I can see that from the volume equation, we get y is equal to uh, 500 uh, divided by 2x squared, which is the same thing as y is equal to what? 500 divided by 2 is 250. When I divide by x squared, that's the same thing as x to the negative 2. So <clears throat> I'll take that expression for y, uh, since it is equal to y, and I will plug it in to uh, this y in my surface area and go ahead and see if we can get some sort of um, surface area equation then out that's just a, a function of x. And indeed that will work, right? We'll get surface area equal to 6x times 250x to the negative 2 um, plus 4x squared. And um, simplifying that up a little bit, let's see, so 
what do we get? We're going to get 6 times 250. Well, that's going to be 1,500. x times x to the negative 2, that'll be just x to the negative 1. So our surface area equation is going to be 1,500 x to the negative 1 plus 4x squared. And suddenly, we've got an equation that we can optimize. So let's go ahead and try to optimize. First, we'll try and find the critical points by uh, finding the derivative of the function and setting it equal to 0. The derivative of the 1500x to the negative 1 will be negative 1500x to the negative 2. The derivative of 4x squared will be uh, 8x. Um, if we set this derivative equal to 0 and solve, uh, what we get is, um, let's see, so we'll get negative 1500x to the negative 2 plus 8x equals 0. Okay, so what does that look like? Let's think about this really quick. So this is the same thing as negative uh, 1500 over x squared plus 8x equals 0. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a common denominator and uh, and then think about how that uh, ratio would be equal to 0. So the common denominator, obviously, 8x is over 1, so I'm going to have to use a common denominator of x squared, which will result in 1,500 plus, okay, so to get it over x squared, I would multiply by x squared top and bottom, so I'd get 8x to the third on top here, and uh, x squared on bottom, that all equal to 0. Okay, so if that's equal to zero, then kind of think about this as a ratio. The only way a ratio um, can be equal to zero is if its numerator is equal to zero. So that means that uh, eight x to the third minus 1500 must be equal to zero. Um, well, that's a simple equation to solve. Eight uh, x to the third equals 1500. So x to the third is equal to 1500 divided by eight. And when I divide 1500 by eight, what do I get? I get something in the neighborhood of 187.5. Uh, and so x has to be equal to the cube root of 187.5, which, uh, you know, if we get a, a general, I guess, <clears throat> round that off, uh, you get about 5.724. So 5.724 is, is roughly what we think x is going to be in this case. Now, there is the, the, the question of whether or not um, this critical point that we've solved for is truly a minimum or a maximum. So you should demonstrate that um, in the process of your solution. Um, so I'll go ahead and, and talk about that a little bit here. So um, how would we know that this is indeed a minimum? Uh, one of the ways we can check that is using the second derivative test, right? So I'll take the second derivative of the surface area function. Um, we've got the first derivative right here, so the second derivative is pretty quick and easy to get. We'll put the negative 2 out in front, and we'll get, um, what, positive 3,000x to the negative 3. Uh, and then the derivative of 8x will just be plus 8. And then what we do is we evaluate the critical... Um, I guess the second derivative at the critical value and see whether or not it is positive or negative, giving us an indication whether the concavity of the graph of the function is, is upward or downward. So what is uh, s double prime of the cube root of 187.5? Well, that's going to be uh, 3,000 over, well, the cube root cubing, that's just going to give you 187.5 down below, plus 8. We can see that that indeed is greater than zero. So the graph is concave up. If it's concave up, then the critical value uh, must be indeed a, a local minimum. So we've, we found a minimum value. Uh, the value of x equals cube root of 187.5 must be indeed a local minimum. So I'll say something like so uh, by the uh, second derivative test x equal, uh, let's keep it exact, cube root of 187.5 uh, is a local minimum. Um, since it's a local minimum, we, we know we found uh, the minimum surface area, at least one dimension of it. Let's go ahead and find the other dimensions. 
Um, so uh, 2x is, is pretty easy. We just multiply that times 2. Uh, but we'd probably want to know what y is as well. So let's go ahead and search back through here. Looks like we could find y as a function of x right here. So um, y is equal to 250 times our x value, the cube root of 187.5 um, raised to the negative 2. Uh, uh, to spare you the um, calculation, I went ahead and, and calculated that already. Uh, and it's roughly a 7.63. Uh, of course, 2x is going to be just, uh, this dimension here, it's just going to be 2 times our uh, local minimum value of x, 187.5. Um, so when I do that, well, I should get something about twice uh, the dimensions of 5.724. Um, so when I do that, uh, times 2, 11.448. Um, so now we can calculate the surface area since we know x, y, 2x. So we, we know how to build this. So here are our dimensions. Our dimensions are, um, I guess, 11.448 by 5.724 by a uh, height of 7.63. Of course, a quick check would be to multiply these guys together. I'll do that really quickly. Um, 11.448 times 5.724 times 7.63. And when I do that, I get something really, really close to 500. If you can see that, 499.98. A little bit of round off error, but indeed the volume is, is maintaining at 500, which is what we expected. Um, but the big question is, is how low is our surface area? So surface area, again, we could use quite a few of these different, um, uh, I guess, uh, formula that we have uh, in front of us. But uh, probably the easiest one would be to use the surface area just as a function of x, this one right here. Um, so I'll use that surface area as a function of x. It's going to be 1,500 times x, which is the cube root of 187.5 um, to the negative 1, uh, and then plus 4 times whatever x is again, th cube root of 187.5 uh, squared. And when I do that as a surface area, um, uh, I'll save you the uh, watching me calculate it. I did this before I, <clears throat> I guess started my video, about 393.11 cubic centimeters of surface area for this particular packaging design. It'll be interesting to see how uh, that particular minimized surface area uh, is going to be different than the other two packaging designs that you choose to investigate in your project. But this would be roughly the mathematics I would expect to see uh, in uh, one of the, um, I guess, um, one of the three examples uh, that you're asked to do in your project adopting some sort of a geometric configuration for packaging and then minimizing um, that surface area and showing me that you can use the calculus to do that. Okay, well, good luck in your project.